This is the number one reason why CKD patients cannot improve, says science. Despite all their efforts, most kidney patients are not able to improve their GFR numbers. This recent study says that his dietary staple may be the key to solve this problem. Catherine here, I've been working with people suffering from kidney disease for more than 10 years now. And if there is one thing that I've learned is that focusing on what actually works is key to help people get better. This is what I want to do today. So let's talk about what really matters when it comes to stopping and even reversing the progression of kidney disease. This recent study found out the number one reason why most CKD patients cannot improve their kidney health despite all their efforts. So if you are doing everything you can to improve your GFR numbers but nothing seems to work, this may be the reason. So question, what is the reason why most CKD patients cannot improve? One of the most authoritative studies about kidney disease seems to have found the key to the renal diet. This paper, published in the BMC Nephrology, has outlined what can be considered the number one problem with the renal diet. Let's read it directly from this study. For most patients with CKD, it is difficult to control their DPI daily protein intake as per the standard range even under the guidance of registered dietitians. Don't worry if this part is not clear, I'll explain better in a moment. The modification of diet in renal disease study, MDRD, found that average DPI reached 0.77 grams per kilogram per day under strict guidance, contrasting with the desired value of 0.58 grams per kilogram per day in the LPD group. So what these researchers mean here is that while CKD patients are supposed to eat as little as 0.58 grams per kilogram per day of protein, which is a very small amount of protein, most of them are simply not able to do so, even if they try. And this can definitely frustrate any effort at improving kidney function. In fact, a large study proved that even when guided by registered dietitians, patients on average were eating 0.77 grams per kilogram per day of protein. And that's a lot more protein than what a patient in stage 3b to 5 pre-dialysis is supposed to eat. Now guys, if you think that you may be eating too much protein, don't worry. First of all, this is not your fault. This diet is still relatively new and even dietitians are failing to make it work as we have seen. And most importantly, the study I want to focus on today is not about the issue. It is about the solution. Yes, these scientists believe they can improve your renal diet at the point of stopping or reversing the decline of your GFR just by focusing on what they call low protein staple foods. Easy to prepare, easy to eat foods that you can add to your diet to greatly decrease your protein intake and protect your kidneys. Now guys, we will see what low protein staple foods are recommended in this study in a moment. Before that, very important question. Is the low protein diet actually proven to help stop kidney disease? Well, today there is solid scientific proof that everyone with kidney disease needs to limit their protein intake if they want to improve their GFR. At the point that today, the guidance, the rule book for the diet for kidney disease, not only says that patients must restrict their protein intake, it even prescribes low to very low amounts of protein to basically anyone with CAD. And well, when a dietary therapy becomes the rule to follow, there must be a good reason, right? Part of this reason is a very large review of studies published on the Cochrane Library that proved that following a low protein diet reduces the chances of ending up in dialysis. 
Studies are also proving that reducing protein intake reduces proteinuria, cholesterol levels, phosphorus levels, hypertension, metabolic acidosis. It even helps with anemia and other complications of CAD. Because, well, this is a diet that protects the kidneys and makes them work better. And yes, we are really close now to a consensus in the medical field when it comes to the low-protein diet. There is just a reason why, today, there are still CKD patients not following a low-protein diet. The low-protein diet, or LPD in short, works. No doubt about it. At the point that, today, studies are not focusing anymore on if it works, but they are now thinking about how to make it work for everyone. Because, you see, there is one main objection to the LPD today. What naysayers will tell you about this kidney-saving diet is that following a LPD is too complicated. This diet has too many restrictions. It's too hard to set up and it's too hard to stick to it. This is what some doctors are still telling their patients, by the way. And also to, well, prepare for dialysis. But I bet you don't want to do that, right? You would prefer to follow a diet rather than to start dialysis. I mean, you wouldn't be here otherwise, right? But you know, the renal diet must be followed in a very thorough way for it to work. And as I was saying, most CGD patients in MDRD study, a large study about the adherence to the LPD, were found to be unable to stick to the prescribed daily intake of protein. So they weren't able to improve. But don't worry, they actually found a solution. Researchers actually found a way to make the low protein diet work for everyone giving a chance to all patients to avoid dialysis. So what's the solution that makes this kidney-saving diet work? It's actually rather simple. This is a principle I love to apply to my videos too when it comes to the diet. In this study, researchers requested the patients taking 250 grams low-protein rice per day or low-protein flour as a low-protein staple food diet instead of regular staple food daily. Yes, this is what I call focusing on what works. So instead of giving people a long list of foods to avoid, these researchers gave them staple foods such as flour or rice that are made to be lower in protein than the regular flour or rice that you can buy at the grocery store. And well, it worked. Participants in this study were able to greatly reduce their protein intake and protect their kidneys just by eating these low protein food staples every day. And well, it's amazing how simple and effective this strategy is because just avoiding high protein foods doesn't work. This is where low protein staple foods come in handy. They are what can make this diet work because you still need to eat enough calories every day. You don't want to lose weight if you have CKD in the advanced stages. But you can't do that if you don't know what to eat. And well, all the most common carbohydrate sources such as rice, pasta, bread, anything made from flour, they all have some protein in them. This is why most patients find it hard to limit protein intake. I mean, they still have to eat something, right? And scientists found out that giving patients foods with no protein in them was the best way to help the patient get enough calories every day without eating too much protein. Yes, this is literally the easiest way in the world to improve your kidney function. So, question, what low-protein staple foods were used in this study? So, this study was done in Japan, and naturally they focused more on rice, which is the main staple food in many Asian countries. Now, the problem with rice is that it is relatively rich in protein. 100 grams of white rice contain about 7 grams of protein. The rice they use in this study, on the other hand, is produced by a Japanese brand food called Forica Foods. They specialize in medical foods and, thanks to a proprietary procedure, they are able to produce rice and noodles with just 0.1 to 0.83 grams of protein per 100 grams. 
So, a lot less protein than what you will get from regular rice. Keep in mind that someone with kidney disease is supposed to consume only 20 to 35 grams of protein per day, depending on body weight. And while rice is not a high protein food, when you get 7 grams here, 7 grams there, it quickly adds up and you end up eating more than you want, as we have seen. This is especially important because foods like rice, pasta, grains, legumes do not have high quality protein. And studies are showing that when you are limiting protein intake, it is better to eat more high quality protein like that you can get from egg whites, for example. So the idea here is simple. Patients eat this rice and they get the calories they need without getting too much low quality protein. Now you may ask, I'm not in Japan. How do I find low protein food staples? Well, Japan is not the only country in the world that adopted the low protein diet for kidney disease decades ago. In Italy, we also use low protein foods such as staple of the renal diet. But we don't make rice, we make pasta here. There are at least three brands that produce low protein or no protein pasta and some of them also export these products. Low protein pasta is a zero or very low protein alternative to pasta that tastes as good as regular pasta. And since low protein pasta is especially developed for people with kidney problems, it is also very low in potassium and phosphorus. Actually, some brands also fortify this pasta with renal vitamins. Talking about brands, this pasta is pretty easy to find here in Italy. This is Amazon.it. You can find almost any type of low protein pasta here, but you can also find low protein cookies, bread, and more. They ship in Europe, so if you are anywhere in Europe, you should have no problems. It may be trickier if you live in places where low protein diets were not the norm for people with kidney problems. However, this is a brand called Aperten. Some websites in the US, Canada, and Australia carry it. Another brand is called Flavis. This one actually ships only in the US. This brand is called Loprofin and ships in Australia and New Zealand. I haven't found anything in the Philippines nor in India, so if any of you guys know about low protein pasta brands in these countries, please let me know in comment section. Now a very important question you may ask, what if I cannot find these products or they are too expensive for me? Guys, even if you don't have access to this kind of low protein food staples, don't worry. You can still benefit from the findings of these very important papers and you can still improve your diet, thus improving your kidney function. Because their results can be replicated just by focusing on low protein staple foods, you can actually buy at the grocery store. Some staple foods with very low protein content that are suitable for someone with kidney disease are all fruits except dried fruits. Fruits are rich in antioxidants, vitamins, minerals, and fiber and can help lower blood pressure and inflammation. Apples, bananas, berries, grapes, melons, oranges, pears, they are all very low on protein. And all vegetables except peas, beans, and corn. These vegetables are also high in antioxidants, vitamins, minerals, and fiber, and can help prevent constipation and lower blood pressure. And they are low on protein and safe for a renal diet, just like many sources of healthy fats such as olive oil and avocados. Healthy fats can help lower cholesterol and inflammation and provide energy and essential fatty acids. Olive oil is a good source of monounsaturated fat and antioxidants, while avocados are rich in vitamins and fiber. All very low in protein and great to protect the kidneys. These foods can be combined in different ways to create delicious and nutritious dishes that are low in protein. You can make a fruit salad with your favorite fruits and a dressing of lemon juice and honey. You can roast or steam your favorite vegetables and drizzle some olive oil and vinegar over them. You can mash some avocados with garlic and lime juice to make a guacamole dip for your tortilla chips or raw vegetables. Okay, and now you may ask, but Catherine, the main finding you showed us today is that most patients cannot follow the prescribed limit for protein intake. How can I make sure I'm not making the same mistake? Well, the answer is this, 100% free up. 
This is something I recommend everyone with kidney disease actually. It's a better way of managing your diet than just following a diet prescribed to you by a dietitian. It's an app called Chronometer. It's a very complete diet app actually and it's simple to use once you get the hang of it. You basically just weight everything you eat on a kitchen scale and you input the food and the weight into the app. What this app gives you is the total of the calories, protein, carbohydrates, and fats you are getting every day. Yeah, it takes some extra time at first, but I still recommend doing this after reading the study today's video is all about. Plus, you will also know how much sodium, potassium, and phosphorus, and well, all the other vitamins and minerals you are getting every day. You can also scan the tag of packaged foods items and the app will automatically add them. I personally use these kind of apps every day because I want to track my macros for my diet. There are various free or freemium apps you can use. NutritionX, MyFitnessPal, Chronometer, Lucid and more. They all do a similar job but the one I actually use is Chronometer because it comes in a free version that lets me do everything I need. And well, in my opinion, for someone with kidney disease, Making 100% sure that they are getting the right amount of protein every day is completely worth the hassle of having to weigh everything and putting everything in the app. And guys, if you want to learn more about the best foods for the renal diet, this video up here is for you and this is all for today. Thank you for watching. God bless you all. Bye.